Henry Morris states, verse 3 is the record of God speaking in the Bible. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. The word of God brings light. Before he created the sun, stars, and moon. Recall this. People have mixed that up. And he's going to have light without light-bearing bodies out in the universe. Apparently, that's what I understand. Compare Psalm 33, 6 and 9. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all their host. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. When light appeared, God divided the light from the, 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 the darkness. Darkness was not removed completely, so far as the earth was concerned, but only separated from the light. Having separated the day and night, God had completed his first day's work. The evening and the morning were the first day. This without stars and moon and sun. This same formula is used at the conclusion of each of the six days, so it is obvious that the duration of each of the days, including the first, was the same. It is clear that beginning with the first day and continuing thereafter, there was established a cyclical succession of days and nights, periods of light, periods of darkness. Such a cyclical light-dark arrangement clearly means that the earth was now rotating on its axis and that there was a source of light on one side of the earth corresponding to the sun, even though the sun was not yet made. Genesis 1.16 It is equally clear that the length of such days could only have been that of a normal solar day, because he's communicating to mankind and our perception, not trying to be mystical and incomprehensible. Returning to the significance of light as created, it is obvious that visible light is primarily meant, since it was in contrast, set in contrast to darkness. At the same time, the presence of visible light waves necessarily involves the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Beyond the visible light waves are, on the other hand, on the one hand, ultraviolet light and all the other short wavelength radiations, and on the other hand, infrared light and the other long-wave phenomenon. In turn, in turn, setting the electromagnetic forces into operation and effect completed the energizing of the physical cosmos. All the types of force and energy which interact in the universe involve only electromagnetic, gravitational, and nuclear forces. And all of these have now been activated, faded. So we had this but just interposing what we understand from science today. Recall that the physical laws governing the universe were considerably changed as a result of the fall and later the flood, which might very well have included those governing light for light will include in, in, indeed be of a different character in eternity future, perhaps as they govern light at creation. Isaiah 60, 19-20 no longer will you have the sun for light by day. This is Isaiah. Not nor for brightness will the moon give you light. But you will have the Lord as for an everlasting light, and your God for your glory. Your sun will set no more. Neither will your moon wane. For you have the Lord. You will have the Lord for an everlasting light. And the days of your mourning will be finished. All of this was accomplished on the first day of creation. The physical universe had been created and energized and was ready for further shaping and furnishing and preparation for man, whose dominion it would be. Psalm 115 and 16. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to man. Now, we have angels created. Although not mentioned in Genesis 1, it is probable that another act of creation took place on this first day. Something, sometime prior to the third day of creation, a multitude of angels had been created. Since they were present when the formations of the earth were laid, probably a reference to the establishment of solid land surfaces on the earth. Let's take a look at Job 38, 4-7. Where were you, Job? When I, God, laid the foundations of the earth, tell me if you have understanding. Who set its measurements, since you know? Who were stretched, or who stretched the line on it? 
But what was the basis where its bases sunk, or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God, angels, shouted for joy. It is impossible that they, angels, could have existed before the creation of the physical universe itself, since their sphere of operation is in, is in this universe, and their very purpose is to minister to the heirs of salvation. Hebrews 1.14 Angels are called the host of heaven, Isaiah 34.4, and so could not have been created before the existence of heaven. Compare Psalm 104, 1 to 5. Praise the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. He wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the winds. He makes winds his messengers, angels, flames of fire his servants, also angels. He set the earth on its foundation. It can never be moved. Bible Knowledge Commentary Psalm 104.4 above suggests that God arrays his angels, messengers, with physical phenomena similar to ways he often manifested himself. Psalm 104, verses 2 to 5 says that angels were made as spirits after the materialization of God's light, arrayed presence in the stretched out heavens, but prior to the laying of the solid foundations of the land. Therefore, although angels are not mentioned as such at this point in Genesis, their spiritual presence as fascinated observers that the remaining acts of creation and formation may certainly be inferred. The light was there before light-bearing bodies were created. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Let there be light, light or singular, let there exist the whole spectrum of visible and invisible light waves which emanate out throughout God's newly created heavens and earth, but not from any particular created light source, created source of light givers. This is different from Genesis 1.14, which states, let there be lights, lights meaning plural, literally in the Hebrew, maor, meaning light givers, i.e. those created bodies in the heavens which emanate light waves stars, sun and moon, and so on. Notice that these light givers, the giver bodies, were created after the light was created. This light emanated out from no particular created source onto the earth. Light is, of course, associated with light-bearing bodies, but it is distinct from them, as seen its creation apart from the luminaries. God's role as creator of light is stressed. Eventually, he will make the sun unnecessary. Take a look at Isaiah 60, 19 to 20. No longer will you have the sun for light by day, nor for brightness will moon give you light, but you will have the Lord for an everlasting light and your God for your glory. Your sun will set no more, neither will your moon wane, for you will have this, the Lord for an everlasting light, and the days of your morning will be finished. So Henry Morris says, On the first day he had said, Let there be light. On the fourth day he said, let there be lights or light givers, intrinsic light first, then generators of light later, is both the logical and the biblical order. So notice, the earth is being portrayed here as how God created in these particular stages. So there's no devastating earth destroyed by Satan and his angelic cohorts. No. This is just the stages by which God created the heavens and the earth. The chief purpose of both the light of the first three days and the light givers of all later days was to divide the light from the darkness. And this can only mean that the two regimes were essentially identical. The duration of the light of the, of the days and nights was the same in each case. And the directions of light emanation on the earth from space must have been the same in each case as well. In other words, light rays 
were impinging on the Earth as it rotated on its axis during the first three days of essentially the same intensities and directions as those which would later emanate from the heavenly bodies to be emplaced on the fourth day. Light was coming during the day as though from the sun and during the night as though from the moon and stars even though they had not yet been made. Scripture indicates that the pre-fall and pre-flood wor worlds were vastly different from today's post-flood world. Many of the physical laws evidently were different. For example, God created man spiritually also alive, never to die physically. After the fall, men were born spiritually dead and did die physically. Then after the fall, God's curse was drastically changed the earth also, indicating changes in physical laws. These changes may very well have included changes in the characteristics and speed of light and the laws of thermodynamics, so that now things are winding down as can be observed throughout the universe. Henry Morris goes on to say, After the first day, the earth was no longer without form, but it was still void of inhabitants. So, we don't have a devastated earth. We still have stages in which God provides some form in the first day, and, is, and then, still void of inhabitants, he's going to work on it in the next couple of days. It must next be prepared as a home for man during his probationary period. Ultimately, the entire universe would be made available for man's exploration and utilization. But first, he must be given the earth, Psalm 115, 16, on a trial basis, and it must be made ready as a uniquely suitable planet for him to dwell on. The earth is indeed a planet uniquely suitable for human habitation. Of special importance is its oxygen atmosphere and its hydrosphere of water. Both are vital for man's existence, and both are unique to the earth, so far as all the evidence goes. The first essential in God's preparation of the earth was a carefully designed atmosphere and hydrosphere. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heaven with a span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth out as a tent to dwell in. Genesis 1, 6 to 8. We're progressing through these uh, verses of Genesis, and we find there's a progression of God adding more and more and more to the earth and the heavens to finish off his work and have a complete heavens and earth. There's no devastation being fixed up, as some maintain. And God said, Let there be a firmament expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, the expanse, and divided the waters which were under the firmament expanse from the waters which were above the firmament expanse. And it was so. See, it's just stages. He's fixing things up. It's like watching an artist do his work on a lump of clay. And God called the firmament expanse heaven. And the evening and the morning for the second day, literal 24-hour day. So God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1-1. And here's how he did it. Now all of a sudden, we have Genesis 1-6-8. And God called the firmament, expanse, heaven, and the evening and the morning for the second, literal 24-hour day. God then creates a firmament, expanse, in heaven, dividing the watery mass in the stratosphere into two heavenly masses of water. The three heavens defined as stratospheric, stellar, and God's throne room. Heaven, literally heavens, plural. There are three particular heavens mentioned in Scripture. The atmospheric heaven, Jeremiah 4, 25, And I looked, and behold, there was no man, and all the birds in the heavens had fled. Heavens, the atmosphere around the earth, which includes the firmament, expanse, composite of hydrogen and water. Wow, a firmament. Stellar, this, the stars, outer space, equals heaven. Isaiah 13, 10. For the stars of heaven, same word, the stellar heavens, and their constellations will not flash forth their light. The sun will be dark, 
when it rises, and the moon will not shed its